good? Dylan, you good? <clears throat> I'm fucking straight. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I ironed my shirt before I got here, but I was in the car for a minute. Bro, oh, that was me. Words. That it's was like, me with I'll the white shirt too. This shit, but fuck it. I'm cool. Well, here we are. Uh, should I throw these on? I think I should throw these on. Yeah, throw them on. The Come on, man. You the aesthetic of you know what I mean? You got yeah, it. <laughs> this is an official podcast. We're official podcasters. All of a sudden, these down. <laughs> Same. That's why I don't wear them because I got the battle head. <laughs> Luckily, they what are you trying to say, fool? Hey, 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 hey! Before we before we keep going on this, we gotta do a fit check. Hold on. Oh yeah, we good. <laughs> before, you still cue home dog? Don't don't, don't, don't <laughs> hey, <laughs> Dylan. Whoa. But it's also like podcast, the most authentic, most organic podcast out here. Let's go, baby. Sir. Man, full house today, and nice. we are sitting. Honestly, a legend. In social media platform, entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. artist, musician, lyricist that has been going for a long time, never fell off, mm. just working on him. And he's impactful. I'm not going to lie. His music, you listen to it, very impactful. And we're sitting to my left with Mr. Izzy in the house, <laughs> baby. Appreciate you, man. Shout out to Atosa's life. I'm a blessing to be here. And uh, I'm ready to get this podcast on the road, man. Yeah, man. Like I said, there's there's no boundaries, man. Let's let's tap into the juicy shit. You know what I mean? Be ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, there, there's no going back now. It's on. No, yeah, it's good, man. Let's go. How's it living, bro? How are you? I'm I'm good, man. You know, if if you're you know tapped into my content, you've listened to my music. You guys know a little bit of, you know, what goes on behind the scenes. So I'm I'm an open book, as we addressed earlier. And, yeah. Uh, you know, shit ain't easy, bro. And, you know, I don't I don't want to be the one to lie and say, like, yeah, my life's amazing. Like, yo, every day is a fucking blissful one. Like, nah, bro. It's it's <laughs> it's a lot of demons I deal with, you know what I mean? So, you know, and just lately, just anxiety, you know, depression, you know, waves, clouds over my head. Mm-hmm. And I try to, you know, I try to stay, you know, focused and, you know, keep the vision going. And, you know, it's just really hard to maintain that vision when you got a lot of shit you know, blurring that shit, especially anxiety, depression, you know, finances, you know, trying to uphold which the lifestyle you're trying to live and shit like that. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, man, overall, I'm going to say this, bro. I'm blessed beyond measure. You know, I, I'm in a place in my life where if you told me three years ago, yo, this is what you're going to have, this is what you're going to drive, this is where you're going to live, this type of girl you're going to be with, a beautiful woman that I'm blessed to have, you know what I mean? I'd be like, nah. Nah, you're, you're tripping, you're tripping. You know what I mean? But now now I'm here and I'm just, you know, God is good. God is good. And exactly. I, I give my my praise to the most high, you know. Okay, we're going to start off <laughs> right away, right away. So if for the people that are tapping in that are new to this platform, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe, follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. Shout love to the homie, yes, sir. You have to. If you don't, then I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> you know, we got to say that. But, you know, thank you for our numbers are running up, blowing up, and we appreciate everybody. Hopefully you guys follow IG because we will be giving out free Starbucks. Oh, so, yeah. You know, if you didn't get free Starbucks last time, then you Side messed note, up. You kind of hey, slept on it. I got a weird addiction, bro. It's not drugs. It's Starbucks. Oh. I had a Starbucks before I got here. Say your order. Oh, sorry. Say your order. <laughs> Y'all ready? Ready. Can I act like I'm in the drive thru? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll, ready. I'll be, I'll be. Matter of fact, my man. Welcome to Starbucks. <laughs> welcome, welcome to Starbucks. How can I help you? Help you the employee. Ready? Okay, yeah. Welcome to Starbucks. Can I take your order? Hi, Go yeah. Um, can I get an iced triple espresso and a grande cup, please? Yes, sir. And can I add two shots of a white mocha with light oat milk, so a fourth instead of the two thirds? You confused the shit out of me, but I got you. Yeah, so, and then lastly, don't forget the extra caramel throughout the cup. Okay, definitely don't want to get fired. I appreciate you. And I always have my puppy, so I'm like, and add a pup cup, please. So. Oh, wait, I want to see the puppy. <laughs> hella, hella bougie type <laughs> shit, bro. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> hey, I ain't going to hold it. Hey, but right? Tell me that wasn't a good order, though. Look, look she's already taking it down. Like, Hey, whoever's watching this, try that drink. And when you like it, say I put you on. Is the official put you on? And if if you have your boyfriend next to you, get him a puppy cup. Yeah, motherfucker. Because <laughs> he's a dog, sis. I, I he's got, a dog. Where's the puppy? I got my dog. <laughs> oh, shit. How do we go from there? I don't fucking know. You can get a Starbucks gift card. What's that? <laughs> yeah, but if you don't follow IG, then you didn't tap into the free Starbucks that we gave out. Little by little, we're going to keep doing all that stuff, giving back to all our followers, subscribers. But if... If you're on social media and you've been on social media watching, you know, watching like how we are, 
losing three hours of time <laughs> just on TikTok. So my average is like four right now. Four <laughs> hours on my <laughs> average daily usage of your phone. Oh, you're good. Yeah, like four and a half, five hours. How do you do that? I'm like at 11 hours. <laughs> Yeah. It pops up, get the fuck off the phone, dog. Bro, for real. We need something like that. But man. was it three years ago when you did the video with Duno? No, no, no. So it was during the pandemic. I think the video dropped in July of 2020. Yes. So how did, how did, so for everybody watching, if if you watched that one, the domestic violence video, funny <laughs> as homegirl shit. Homegirl abusive, man. The homegirl abusive. <laughs> Catch a case over there. <laughs> how did that relationship with Duno transpire? How did you, like, how did that work out? Yeah, no, it's 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 crazy because I had seen Duno starting to pop off in that time, right? Right around the pandemic, he started really like posting his content, and um, you know he had traction. He was really he was doing well, and he had a, I think he had like ninety something thousand followers on Instagram, which in 2020 was popping. Oh hell yeah! You know I mean, now you have ninety thousand. You know, you're just like every other influencer. But um, anyway, so I saw him on um, Twitter. Saw him. Twitter was where I found him. Yeah. Okay, Twitter, he was popping on Twitter. All his videos were going viral. So I was like, dude, this guy's funny as fuck. And I've always aspired to be an actor after my music career take to, or took off. Mm -hmm. So um, speaking that into existence. So I was like, man, maybe I could start doing these um, skits and shit. You know, it was something to be everything. Everybody was doing stupid skits during the pandemic. So I was like, you know, what? let me just hit this dude up. But I didn't have access to him. I know he wouldn't respond to my DM because I didn't have that, that clout yet. I only yeah. had like 20K on IG. At like 3,000 on Twitter. So I was like, let me see, how can I get a hold of him? And at this time, my TikTok was finally starting to get buzzed. So I went to TikTok and I was like, all right, I got a little bit more clout than this dude right here. So uh, let me see if he responds to me on TikTok. So I commented on one of his videos. I was like, hey, let's do a collab. Hit me. And he responded to my comment on TikTok. He was like, yeah, for sure, tapping on IG. Oh, shit. And I'm like, all right, here we go. This is the, this is the deal breaker right here. He's going to see my IG. It ain't popping. He ain't trying to do nothing. You know what I mean? Whatever. But I still shot my shot, you know, not in a weird way. But I DM'd him. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, that dude knows me like, he shot his shot. It was but bouncing, nah. it was bouncing <laughs> off the rim. Like, oh, shit, let's see what's in. But uh, not nah, anyway. So shot my shot on IG. Texting him. I was like, yo, bro, let's, let's do the collab. It's me from TikTok, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a day goes by. Two days go by. Excuse me, two days go by, and I'm like, all right, this dude ain't gonna respond. Whatever. You know, I ain't got I had nothing to lose anyways. You know, so three days go by, a week goes by, and finally I get a message. I'm just at home chilling. I had nothing to do. I was still working, but I had the day off. So I was like, man, you know, just whatever. And boom, I get a message from Duno. I'm like, oh shit. So responded to, I, I look at the, the message and he's like, yo, pull up. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, pull up, like when? Like, you know, when do you wanna do this? He's like, right now. And I'm like, bro, like, I'm not even in L.A. I'm in the I.E. So I'm like, bro, like, right now, right now, he's like, yeah, pull up. So he didn't know I was, where I was from. So I was like, whatever, I'm with the shit. Like, boom, it. texted it back. Like, all right, bro, I'll be there in like an hour and a half. Shoot the Addy. He was like, all right, bet. He was like, I'm right here. So I get in the car, pull up, bro. Me and Duno never met in ever, you know what I'm saying? So I pull up to the to the hood, bro. This mm -hmm. motherfucker brought me to the neighborhood, yes, bro. Yes, sir. And I'm, to the block, I'm over bro. on Echo Park and shit, you know what I mean? I'm from Banny, but where I'm from, it's not like the the Mexican ghetto. Like, mm -hmm. where I'm from, it's like hood hoods. Like, it's like, you know, you got blacks, Mexicans. It's a, a mixture of it's things. A mixture, yeah. Yeah, so, but when I pulled up to Echo Park, bro, it was something yeah. serious. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully it's not a setup or whatever. So you I pull up. text him before you get off the car. I'm right here, bro. Oh, yeah, so I'm, I'm cruising the neighborhood in my Mazda at the time. And I'm like, yo, I'm here, whatever. He's like, oh, okay, cool. He comes out, comes out the cut. I'm talking about in a slow spot. I'm like, all right, cool, I'm, let's do it. You know what I mean? I pull up on him, say what's up. You know, we chop it up a little bit, kind of get, you know, acquainted with one another. One another. And uh, you could just tell off the rip, but we're two, two different lifestyles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So after that, bro, you know, we just kind of figured out. I was like, I thought about the idea when I got there. So I told him, I was like, look, bro, let's just do some sort of like thing about me having a crazy girl. You wanted to kick it with some females, and I'm like, nah, bro, like, you know what I'm saying? And we didn't have a script. It wasn't scripted. We thought about this video, like, within five, ten minutes. And after those ten minutes, we are like, boom, let's run it. Three videos in. We did the first one fucked up. Second one was good. The third one, boom. Like, all right, let's, let's just stick with that one. So then we did my video, which is on my Instagram. That did, like, Shit, over 100,000 views. 100,000 views on tic on Instagram is crazy. It's Hell lot. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? 100K on Instagram is crazy. That's so that video went wild on my Instagram. And it was kind of like around the same concept, but um, not the same exactly. But yeah. anyways, bro, yeah. So long story short, I was in a situationship at the time. And uh, I was out in Arizona. And he, he texted me. He's like, 
yo, bro, I posted the video. And I'm like, all right, bet. Three in the morning, four in the morning, he hits me. Or I don't know what, I can't tell you the specific time. But he was like, bro, you know, this shit's, this shit's going. Loving. This shit's going. And then long story short, bro, uh, a meme account. A meme account on Instagram got a hold of it. Uh, funny hood videos. <laughs> oh, yo, yo, yo. Yeah. Yeah. Knows Damn, that motherfuckers knows. got like 16 mil. So, oh, and, you know, man, all my appreciation to that account because they could have just tagged Duno, let alone not tagged nobody. Mm -hmm. But they tagged Duno and me. And the caption just read, like, uh, cr uh, credits to these two. Nothing else. And, bro, their video just got jumping. So I had... You know, I was I was in, in Arizona at the time, so I'm like just dropping off. You know, at the time, the girl I was talking to, and uh, I get I'm I'm my phone is just going off. It feels like it's ringing. It's not ringing, bro. This shit's like just and I'm like what? So I check my Instagram, and sure enough, 99 plus, 99 plus, or 100. It said like I don't know how many followers you could say you get at, at one. I think it's like 99. Uh, yeah, the 99 plus sign. Dog, I, I, like I went from I went from 20,000 followers on IG to. 47,000 in, in like a week. Shit was crazy. So how do you follow up from that, though? That's the thing, bro. <laughs> stars were aligning. So check this out. This is where it gets, you know, shout out to Duno, man. The domestic violence video was one for the ages, you know what I mean? I feel like that, that video will always be in, in the record books of, you know, comedy. So, yeah, you know, it, I, and I, I think it's still, here and there is still, like, traction on TikTok. Well, the thing is, people grab it and post it again. Yeah. Just to get their just, account some traction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't see me do that next week <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah, it, it goes every time it's posted, too. But um, anyway, shout out to Duno for that, man. That was that was a blessing that he, you know, reached back out to me and, you know, made it happen. But anyways, outside of that, you know, I had just got out of my relationship and I was I was down bad, bro. I was down bad. But like I said, the stars were aligning because in that relationship, I was given the ultimatum to either save the relationship and delete all my social media, you know what I mean? Or keep your social media and it's over. And I was so caught up in my feelings at the time because I was, I was down, you know what I mean? I, I love hard. So I was like, man, you know what? So, you know, I told the person, I was like, look, if, if that's the case, I'm willing to save the, the relationship, but you got to delete my IG. And again, I had just hit like 40 some thousand followers and you know, I was willing to give it all up. That's like four years at the time, five years of hard work, consistently posting, you know, rap videos, music videos, all my content, you know, 400 plus posts worth. And that's a lot of posts considering. How, how long did it take you to make that decision? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, bro, it broke my heart to say I, I said yes on the spot. Oh shit. Okay. But I said yes on the spot with the exception of I'm not doing it because I had too much pride in what I worked for, for the, to the fact that I was like, you know what? Nah, I worked my ass off. Like, this is my life like earnings right here, bro. Like, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to see past that, but you have to do it. So sure enough, never happened. Kept my IG. Relationship ended. The Duno video popped off. Kept spiraling. Like, it's going crazy. And then two months later, mind you, in the midst of all this, I had been consistently applying for verification on Instagram mm -hmm. due to my music platform and my history with that. And there's a lot of things that took place with my music, but we'll dabble into that later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll dabble um, in. Anyway, so right after the breakup, right after the Duno video, Sure enough, IG responded to my verification request through the app, and I'm at the laundromat, bro, thugging it out, like on some get up <laughs> shit, you know what I mean? Just making it happen. Half order, had tight, bro. <laughs> had to put like $20 on the card and shit, you know what I mean? So um, Counting the quarters? I'm, I'm, I'm putting my clothes in the dryer, and I get, I'm checking my IG, you know, just however I do it, and I get a notification with the little I. So the I is like the information sign yeah. Yeah. in your notification. So you're familiar with what, how your notifications look. And sure enough, bro, it was a big-ass paragraph. And I'm like, oh, shit, maybe I got uh, copyrighted. Maybe something happened. Banned or something. Totally forgot I had applied for the verification because I was doing it. I did it like four or five times, okay? Mm -hmm. I think it was the fourth time that I got approved. Um, the message read or the notification read, your account has been approved for verification. You will now have a... Uh, badge next to your username so on and so forth bro heart dropped tears immediately dog because you got to understand man like having the verification badge on any platform is dope but getting that status that recognition and acknowledgement from instagram itself and doing it the right way at that moment bro i was like everything changes from here Everything changes. Ran outside the laundromat, got a bottle of Hennessy because the laundromat is right yeah, next to a so liquor sad. store. There's always a liquor store next to it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right, right, right next to it, bro. So right next to it was the liquor store. I ran over there, called my mom and my sister. I'm like, mom, like, 
it, it's happening. Like I, I, I told everybody it was going to happen, but it's happening now. I finally got verified. And at that point, I was like, I'm famous. I'm that guy. You know what I mean? My head was big. As I got hell. it like that. Let's I'm, go. I'm, Come on, bro. Yeah. Come on. Bro. <laughs> you know, Let's go. I love this. Uh, um, you know, that was a moment in my career that was very, you know, uh, emotional for me but mm -hmm. it, it was uh it was something that i needed to keep going bro because that you get to a point of discouragement in your career where like shit's not happening and then you know you that's go where most a, people fall off you, get, you go through a fucked that, up situation ship that's that thing though because you work so hard and you're not getting that recognition and you have the option to fucking quit bro you oh, have man. the opportunity to you know what fuck it is what it is maybe it's not my time yeah but then you get that little that little bump, that little, yes, bro. yo, keep going. That little sign of the power above. Oh. Like, yo, keep fucking going. Man. Whatever it may be, dog, for whoever's listening, like, if your shit is not popping off, keep fucking going. Don't be the victim. Don't be the person to hold yourself back. You have to be the only one that is willing to fight for your fucking dream to make it happen. It may not happen in a week, a day, a month, a year, but it's coming. It's coming, and it's not going to come in the time that you expect it to come. It comes at the perfect time. It's going to come at the perfect time, and when you least expect, expect it. Yes. When you least expect it. When you're at the laundromat, throwing clothes in the dryer, you know, checking your Instagram, and boom, you know what I'm saying? That's when yeah. it comes. Yeah, like you for, like, speaking on, again, shout out Duno, because of the guests that we've shout had. Shout out to the homie Duno yeah. one time, man. <laughs> hey, that one, that message came about, I still work with my dad, but I was driving to my destination during work, I'm yeah. driving and I'm looking at my phone. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Oh, fuck, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to switch lanes for no reason. And I was like, yo. And again, it's that sign that you get that you thought maybe it wasn't, maybe it wasn't working out. Yeah. Then you get that reassurance like, yeah. nah, bro, it's working. It's a breakthrough. It's a breakthrough. Yeah, bro. It's, it's something that reignites your fire to keep going. You know what I'm saying? Slight fast forward. You got that verification. Yeah. Now, you know, you got the reminder. Yep. How do you move in life right after that, progressing with your business? You have a business. Yeah. Let, let, let's yes. throw that out there. You're yes. an entrepreneur. I am. For the people that don't know what is your brand, what is the thing that you do besides music? Yeah, so music was, was the establishment. You know what I mean? That's what it started from. And, you know, as you start to build any sort of audience, you know, you need, they want to have something they identify with you yeah. as, as a whole. So Facts. they want to feel a part of whatever it is that you're doing. You know what I mean? So um, I thought about it and I dropped out of college, dropped out of uh, playing baseball. And I was like, told my pops, I'm like, yo, music's going to be the, the, the thing I'm working on now. And I want to have a clothing brand. And I was like, it's going to be called Seven Figure Clothing. And, you know, fast forward a few, lays, a few, a few years later, I have a clothing brand called Million Dollar Dreams Clothing, and it's incorporated, uh, owned by me legally. You know, I have an S Corp. And, yeah, man, you fast forward, here we are six figures in. And it's it's uh, something that you can't really fathom when you first tell somebody, you know what I mean? So, you know, going back to what you said, you know, just keep going. You don't know when your time is, as well as when you tell somebody your vision Nobody's going to see that shit, bro. No Nobody, gonna nobody's going to understand you. it because the vision that you have is outside of everybody's understanding. They can't see what you see because it's, it's unreal. It's unrealistic. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm going to make a brand and it's going to make six figures in a year. You know what I mean? It's going to do well over half a mil. And that's exactly what's going to happen. And somebody looks at you like, nah, bro, I'm used to making 75K a year. And I'm sorry, bro, but the Hispanic people are just... It, they're yeah, the ones that and, bring you down. And my those. family it, is it, Hispanic it, as well. So. But, it, but it's because... When you tell your pops, your mom, about a dream, yes, they have dreams, but they never were able to go for it because they had to provide. They were conservative, bro. If conservative, like you had to play. They had to play it safe. Absolutely. And and if we play it safe, yeah, we will still go good. But we do have an opportunity to fucking blossom, and that's the thing. And I'm quoting it for somebody else, but they said, "You cannot tell." a big dream to a small minded person. Absolutely. Because yeah. they're never going to understand it. Understand You're it. never going to understand it. And I don't need you to. Yeah. I don't thing. need you. To. That's the thing. I'm going to tell you my million dollar dream. You may think it's crazy, but it's okay. Yeah. I'm crazy. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm crazy as a <laughs> motherfucker crazy as in this. Yeah. Everybody yeah. in this room knows how passionate I'm about this. That like, yo, if you're not about this, I don't want you, bro. Like Absolutely. I need yeah. to do this. Yeah. 
I'm sacrificing everything possible to make this happen, but it's been working. Oh, yeah, and it's it's not going to work as fast as you want it to, but inch by inch, bro, them inches so stack the fuck that, up, and then you're like, damn, look at me now. Look at us right here at this fat-ass spot doing a podcast. You didn't think you were going to be here. Nah. You know what I mean? I mean, you wanted, you wanted to believe it, which yeah. you did. But at one point in your career, like, nah, I mean, I don't know. You know, maybe, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Hopefully. But yeah. I, but I think, saying? tell me if I'm wrong on this. I'm not sure. But You're wrong. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even done with my shit. I, don't I feel like our parents or our Hispanic culture, you know, family, they want us to live their dreams. You know, because they yeah. can never dream it themselves. I mean, yeah. they can never live it themselves. I, I, so it's like when you say, you know what, I want to make a brand. I want to do this. Yeah. It's going to come up to this. So you're going to be like, no. Yo quiero que seas doctor, yo quiero que seas esto, you know? Because yeah. they wanted yeah, to do that. And yeah. it's like, no, like, there's different options just what you have, you know? So I think what the, the, the transition was going from conservative uh, conservative shit or whatever it's called, um, mm. being conservative with your finances, you know, going to school, getting a degree, going, getting a job and working your whole life and the working system. for retirement. That's yeah. the system, right? Mm -hmm. But that was working for them. They got to understand, bro, we were the first generation outside of that, that exactly. matrix, bro. Yes. So we were the first ones to step out of it. So our parents aren't supposed to understand it. But that's the thing, bro. We got we to gotta keep going and believe in our own dream, the way he said, because not everyone's going to see the vision. I had to tell my pops one time because I was at this event. It was like three years ago, and I was around like Snoop Dogg's son and a few others. And, um, you know, me, I'm not me at this time, so I don't have the platform that I have. My merch isn't doing well for me at the moment. And But in my head, I'm still him, like, I'm, I'm in that room like, look, I understand Snoop Dogg's son is over here, but I'm paying him no mind because I feel like I'm, I'm, to be, I'm the one to be looked at in the room. Oh, man. And I, told, I told my pops, he was like, you didn't get his autograph and this, that, and the third. I'm like, I'm that too. I'm that guy too. They didn't get my autograph. Like yeah. I'm, I, I'm amongst people that I'm in uh, the same category as, and that's how you got to see yourself in the in the life you exactly. know that we live. Because you know what I'm saying, the minute you start having self doubt, all this other bullshit that you're feeding oh. into in your head, bro. Everyone else know. feeds off that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, people vi vibrate to people who are confident, to people who know it that they're that their shit don't stink, bro. And I'm not saying to be cocky, but just. Confidently. Be confident and aware of what you are capable of, and you know what I'm saying, what you possess as an individual. You oh, know what I'm saying? For, sh for sure. Like and, you and talk your shit, bro. You oh, know what I'm yeah. saying? Talk your shit, and, and it's gonna hurt some feelings. You're gonna rub people the wrong way. They're gonna be like, oh, that guy right there, he's an asshole, bro. <laughs> Never had a conversation with either of you, but these two right here, bro, I don't fuck with these dudes, bro. They're dickheads. I already know they think their shit don't stink. They're all that, this, this, and a third. But you guys are amazing people, but you guys are very confident. And an insecure person is gonna be inferior to your confidence. And that's why you're going to have the people that get rubbed the wrong way. But at the end of the day, bro, that confidence and that aura you carry is going to always, you know, bring you to that next level. And that's what I told my pops in the kitchen. I was like, look, I'm that guy, too. Just not yet. Yeah. The, Kevin Gates said the best, and I always quote it. I'm him. I'm, yeah. I'm him. Yeah. Like, and it's that, it's that part, though. Like, you walk in anywhere, and you can, I'm going to, and Rosecrans Vic just said it. I'm going to be the quietest one in the room. Yeah. But you know I'm going to be the loudest the when noise, it comes down to it. The noise is 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 there. Yeah, I mean, it's loud. Too. Like that that's that's like that the sound that just played right now. Shit's loud. That's, we don't know where it's at, but it's loud as fuck. That, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we know it's him. Yeah, it's, but we know it's him. <laughs> He's in here somewhere. <laughs> but you know it, it's it's that part. Like you know you, the real the the thing about just anything you're doing is. You got to be confident in what you do. Absolutely. You got to believe in what you do. And yeah. even if, how you said, if it's not even working, hey, you still talk that shit like it is. Yeah. Because yeah. you built it no matter what happens. Absolutely. Like, this shit day tomorrow, yo, you have this for you. So, what are you going to do, dog? Like, this is this is who I am. This is who I am now. Hey, you're that podcaster, right? Hey, you do the podcast. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah. Yes, I do. And I think for my parents, my parents now kind of know more how serious this is in a sense. And we just finished saying it and like, Hey, you know what? Like if I leave this, it doesn't affect nobody. It affects only me. Yeah. And for them, you know, we, we were in Long Beach just last week. Weird, bro. We went to Long Beach celebrating my mom's birthday. Uh, we're just walking the pier with everybody. We did our thing coming back and we're like me and him. We're like, all right, we're like, we're going to head out. Cause yeah, yeah. it's time. The most random shit. We're just walking. I'm talking to him. And then my cousins are behind me. And then some dude just like, hey, bro, 
You guys are Tulsa Light Podcast, huh? Oh, and man, I was just bro. like, I was, was, we, we were walking. He was, yeah. was staring at that's, that's a moment, bro. That's a, that's a moment. Yeah. That's a moment. I look at him. I'm like, what? We, we I'm like, like, we hey, are? What the fuck is going I'm on? like, we are? And because was, you guys barely started the, the movement of Toast to Life. Like, yeah. At it, that moment. That was like, you guys are still fresh. No, this was just oh, last week. Last week. Oh, so, okay. No, okay. Yeah. So, so my thing. And we've been like now we go to the gym yeah. and we get yeah. like we and and small little things right small okay. little accomplishments yeah yeah and it's just traction you know yeah, now we're landing traction. on people's for you page yeah. and shit like that for instance myself I knew who you guys were you know what I mean already off the rip that was crazy you know what I'm that's crazy yeah crazy. but that dude just walked in and like his girlfriend was like right next to him he walks up to us hey you got a Tulsa Life podcast I'm like yeah bro what's up how you doing right. And he didn't ask for nothing. I told them, I was like, yo, let's just take a picture. He's the one that asked for a picture with the guy. Yeah. I'm like, to so me, I'm the big, I'm like, <laughs> now I'm a big fan. Yeah. I'm like, you follow me, but I'm a big fan because this is love. That, that's a moment of humility, though. You, you, you're you're oh, aware definitely. enough to know where you came from. And that moment in itself is very important to you more than yeah. he, that person thought it was. Yeah. And they, they, for, they thought they were having a great day seeing you. That was amazing, but they don't know that they made your day just bro, as we, much. We, walk, we walked to the truck, we're smiling. Like, yes, bro. And like, they don't know no that. Pe- the, the I was like, let's go. That. I was like, let's go buy 1942 now. Hey, go get a shot now. People know us. You know what I mean? But it, it's one of those things that now people see this. Yeah. And you know, besides that fact, my our biggest blessing is the messages that we get that like, yo, we're in depression. Yeah. We're in anxiety. Um, we're dealing with anxiety. We're dealing with the heartbreak, whatever. It's demons. I fell into this podcast and I got help. Thank you. I'm just like, bro, you get somebody uh, there it is. Uh, a, a time different. and a place to just clear their mind and just focus on whatever content you post. And that that's the best thing about shout social out, media. Shout out right? John from fucking Real Alto. Yo, so John, this this dude, this dude, I go to I follow I was fighting demons like I went in the morning yeah. at the gym. But this dude looks like the fucking game, dog. The rapper. Okay. Bald, tatted, 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 tatted everywhere. Jeez. And I've seen him before. And I was, we're just, I'm just working out. I have my headphones on. I'm just, I just look serious. I just see this one walking towards me. I'm like, damn, what is this one going to tell me, dog? Mm-hmm. Like, he was, he was already it's kind of like issues. I'm like, what did I do wrong? Getting, getting the weight, the 45. Like, <laughs> who did I look? Who did I look at? Your maybe, size is also an ego tester too. Like, this guy's big. Let's see what's up with him. I'm like, you know maybe I mean? he wants a machine. I gotta give it up or something. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm not for. I don't know using it. And this was like, yo, you do a podcast, huh? And I was like, yeah, bro, what's up? My name is Luis. It's like, hey, bro, I fell into that one with, with little man. Hey, that shit hit me, dog. Oh, it's shit. like, I send that shit to my son. Thank you, dog. Wow. And then we got into a conversation, and then, like, now we see each other. We always dab each other up, and he fell into some things, and I'm just like, that's crazy. The yeah. community that you build, how you said it, the community that you build yeah. will forever be your community because they didn't just fall in love with what you're doing, but of who you are as a person. Absolutely. Is on? Ash is in the Maybach. 30 on my side. 40 on my left. You got to go before I get it. Yes, sir. You said what? <laughs> oh, bro, man, I've been I've been writing a lot lately, dog. So we're I, we're back on. Oh, so exactly. let let we we are here, and you know, if you're taking the motivation, just know, trust yourself, trust your process. Your time will come. Just gotta put in the work. Yes, sir. Simple and said, but your music. Let's shine light on Izzy's music, man. Feeling emotions. <laughs> Stories being told and and just told. All of the above, bro. All of the above, bro. Yeah. Why did you get into music? What comes with creating music? Because I was like 2018, you were dropping. Oh, bro. 2000, 20, 2015. 20, I was dropping. Shit. I wasn't going that. I was like focusing like 2022, 2021. 20, I was like, I was at 2028, uh, yeah. 2018, 2028. What yeah. the fuck? 2018. I'm is, gone. Yeah, that's it. That's a wrap. I'm gone. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> 2018, 2015. To specify on why that said the 2018 is, is a number that's probably in your head is because I got access to the distributor, which there's two of them. There's TuneCore which artists like Russ use. Um, I went ahead and went the other direction with DistroKid. So if you're watching this, you're, you're making music, you're trying to get outside of SoundCloud and post your, you know, your music on all platforms, DistroKid is probably the best bet. It's very, you know, efficient. You know, it's not that expensive. 
like a $30 charge once a year. But anyways, I got on that in 2018, posted my content. You can do that independently. That's, that's the best part. You don't need a label. You don't need anyone posting your shit for you. You can do it all yourself. So 2018 is when I got on that and got able, or I was able to distribute my music to all the big platforms where people were listening, you know, on a daily basis. Cause not everybody was fucking with SoundCloud anymore like that. After, you know, the 2018, so um, 2019, there was a yeah. transition to Spotify, iTunes, Apple music, title, so on and so forth, all the DSPs. So thankfully I discovered distro kids. So that's why that year I was posting, everything was 2018. But a lot of those songs came out before 2018, or, 2017, 2016, so on and so forth. But yeah, bro. So what the the, the decision you were talking earlier, you told your dad about yo know, this music thing. Yeah. Why write music? Why go into music? You know what, bro? Um, I think a lot of people seek help and they don't know how to ask for it, or they don't know outlets to express themselves, and they bottle everything. So when I discovered that not only did God give me the uh, ability to rhyme, he also gave me the ability, because it's two different things, bro. You can you can rhyme words, cat, hat, bat, stats, all that. Shit, you you know? can say a bunch of bullshit, which a lot of rap nowadays is that, if you ever pay attention to it. A lot of songs have no really focus on the song. It's a bunch of directions and bullshit. But anyways, um, what was I saying? I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, God gave me the ability to not only be able to rhyme, but to put songs in 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 a an emotional form and and make it make sense, but express myself in the in the in the deepest realm, you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I'll repeat what I just said once that. No, you're good. You're good. Just put it on silent, homeboy. Turn a little. We can see just right. turn on the volume. That's Joaquin's. I'm gonna tap that full refund my money. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he's no, I'm not. I was gonna say he's big stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Probably everybody calling him right now. But, but yeah, man, to pick up where I left off. Basically, God gave me that gift to not only put my words together, but to put my emotions in those words. And I needed an outlet, bro. During like 2013, 2014, I, I started to discover my demons, like anxiety, depression, all these things started to hit me, especially after high school. So um, I, need, I, I wanted something to be able to comfort myself with. But I was always kind of not afraid, but I was more ashamed to talk about it because nobody was really talking about it at the time. Mental mental health wasn't really a point in in that that gen, that time in 2014, 2015. Uh, we weren't really talking about men's health, you know what I mean? Let alone any anybody, women, men, it don't matter. So music was that outlet, bro. My first song was a remix to J. Cole's Sideline Story, and I called it My Side of the Story. And in that song, I just basically opened up the floodgates for all the emotions. And everything just kind of piggybacked from that point forward. And, you know, I just, you know, at the end of that song, I said, I, I, I felt like this was my calling. This was my purpose. Like I had, I had a bigger purpose outside of myself to not only inspire, but to be the voice of those that don't have one, that don't have the outlet that I'm, I'm blessed to have, that don't have parents, that don't have loved ones who care about them or enough to sit there and listen to what they have to say. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people dealing with suicidal thoughts, depression, anxiety, yeah. every demon you can think of that they can't talk about, bro. There's no one that they can sit there and be like, yo, this is it. Cause they're embarrassed the way I was. They're ashamed. They're, they, they just, they, they're closed off. You know, they're introverts. And these are daily wars that people go on with that don't have the ability to express, you know what I'm saying? So Just I, society doesn't accept men that way. You know, no, no, absolutely not. not. Absolutely not. And it's perceived as, you know, and, and nowadays their, their, their term of being a simp, bro. And I, yeah. I've, I've taken that role on a hundred percent. I've been called a uh, simp a million times, bro. And I'm still laughing at these like, motherfuckers like, dog, I'll be that. <laughs> you can be as hard as you yeah. want, but be miserable at the same time. You know, G. It, it's, um, uh, it is literally a, you would, I call it a, a power under your tube belt to be as emotional as we are. Absolutely. I'm very emotional. And I tell everybody, I am very emotional, but I am that guy. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you can, you can, there's a, there's a medium. Like you can, you can be both of those things. Yeah. Like my biggest thing is like, we talk about mental health and that's where this base of a podcast came from. Yeah. Was like, yo, let's make these uncomfortable conversations comfortable. Right. Like, we're going to be that voyage, and, and everybody knows it and sees it now. Like, yo, I've been feeling that way, just I was never confident enough to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, then I am. Yeah. I'm good with the repercussions that come out of this. Whatever comes out of this, whatever I just said right now, I'm good with the repercussions. Yeah. I am that guy. You see me outside, and you ask me something. You tell me, 
yo, I, I said it already. Yeah. What are you going to tell me? And right. I've said it before, the viral video that went out, like, do I cry? Yes, I do. Am I depressed? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. But do I get up every day to go to work? Yes, I do. Every time. I am that motherfucker that, that you guy. thought was going to sit out. Yeah. I am him. Yeah. And there's like, damn, bro, I like, I, I want to be like that. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. you could, dog. Like, right. yeah. just find that, find that thing, that, that purpose in your life that allows you. You got to. Maybe let go of certain people. Of course. Oh, man. Or just don't follow society, huge. bro. Don't follow the resume that this person told hey, you you got to do this. Said, bro. That's, that's key society, bro. is not following yeah. society, let alone not following what society wants you to do, let exactly. alone feel. You know what I'm saying? Because they'll literally uh, mold you to be a certain way. And that'll change your whole entire uh, way of living, yeah. your happiness, you know, Even everything. though you're not personally like yeah. that, you're and like, that's fuck, because, I want to fit in. And that's because we're trying to fit in. We're living for validation outside of ourselves. Exactly. And that's what social media is nowadays. You got a bunch of motherfuckers trying to act all nice and this, that, the third. Like, they don't have fucking skeletons in their closet. That's why the cancel culture is such a huge thing. Because you got a bunch of people who are imperfect themselves trying to cancel others just because they're, they're afraid of their fucking situations or whatever they've done that they're, you know insecure about surfacing and shit they don't they're not afraid they're not they're afraid to admit to their situation so they rather yeah. cancel someone else they rather shit on everybody else except look in the mirror Themselves. and be like damn i don't got this shit figured out either i'm, I'm a mess myself bro trying to redirect and that's it, the so thing bro so if you talking to the camera right in front of you yeah to those people that are going through something but don't and can't find that power, the courage to get up and go do their thing still because they're afraid to be judged or looked at different. Yeah. What would you tell them? Um, I could I could just tell you in a more broader perspective, live to inspire outside of yourself. Forget about you. Forget about this here because this is what avoids being embarrassed, being ashamed, being judged, being canceled. You know what I mean? Live for someone outside of you. Do it for your mom, your girl, your your boyfriend, your, you know, your grandparents. Someone that, that looks up to you or someone that believes in you. You know what I'm saying? Do everything in this world that this world has to offer for you, but do it except uh, outside of yourself. You know what I mean? Because the minute you start living for other people and doing things for, you know, other inspirational purposes, that's when you're really going to reach your potential. Because a lot of people hinder themselves because they're afraid. And why are they afraid? Because they're afraid of what's going to happen to them. What's what's going to be judged uh, from the outside looking in? You know what I mean. So erase the 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 view from the outside. You know, learn to think. You know, basically outside of yourself and and live live to inspire others and you know do things for your other people or for other people, not just yourself. And you'll find that that potential in yourself. You know what I mean. So I like. That. Damn, the longer waited Izzy fucking throwing <laughs> gems, bro. You've been in this social media game for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And Very people have time. have followed you, unfollowed you. Mm. People have fell in love with you and fell out of love with you. Yeah. Your biggest turn back moment in your life. Turn back. Turn, specify, like so when when we say turn back, I took this turn from another one, but it's that moment where you could have quit. Oh, like yes. there's the moment that happens. You're like, fuck, bro. You could have I could quit at this moment. But you know what? And it changes you. That moment was 2021. The beginning of 2021. I had, you know, I was dealing with relationship problems. I left my job being courageous at the time, trying to focus on social media, my music career, the brand. You know, at the time, my brand was barely doing a few sales a month, you know what I mean, a t-shirt or two here and there. And I was like, you know what, I, I wrote my two-week two uh, notice to my job, and I was like, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to focus on my career, and, you know, everybody wished me luck and stuff like that. And I was like, cool. A few months later, bro, did not work out. Did not work <laughs> out. In, in other terms, I failed. I failed, bro. Money was tight. I was literally going door to door doing um, dry sales and shit like that. So trying to make ends meet while doing my career. And uh, basically, bro, I, it didn't work out for me. I was heavily involved, you know, drinking alcohol, just trying to, you know, hide away everything that suppress was going that. and suppress that. Yeah. And um, basically had to take that moment of, of humility and say, you know what? I failed. I failed. I went back to my job, reapplied. Went right back to my position. I was union at the time. So, you know, you had like a nine-month period of where you can leave your job, come right back to your position. So, luckily, in that 
nine month period of a uh, failure. You're like, I'm back. Bro. Yeah, I was like, I'm back, man. You know, and um, that was a tough pill to swallow, bro. Because you know, you always want to prove everybody wrong yeah. and everybody's betting against you. So when they, when someone's like, yeah, that motherfucker fell off, that, yeah. that boy failed, you know, he ain't, he ain't make it. I knew he wasn't shit. You know, it's hard to accept that and be like, you know what? You were right this time. And that was what I had to specify in my head. They were right this time, but I promise Just you watch. there will be a next time. Mm -hmm. And when that next time comes, whether it's this time coming up or the following one or the following after that, I'm going to fail and I'm going to fail again until I get it right. And sure enough, bro, here we are a year later, you know, six figures in, you know, fully self-employed, incorporated brand. You know what I mean? I, and I got my mom on payroll. You know what I'm saying? I, I, a lot of my haters back in the day could never say that. They could never say they paid their mom a dollar. They're still living with their moms. You know what I mean? And I'm not bashing nobody that does live with their moms if they're doing the right thing and they're not hating on others trying to come up. But you know what I mean? I, I, I believed in that process and I had to humble myself and go back to my job and work nine to five. Until it made sense, until it happened for me. And again, like we touched bases on earlier, you know, it, it's going to happen. It's just not going to happen the way you want it or when you want it to. So I had to trust that process. And here we are, man. It's just, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. I like Jesus. that for you. Jesus like Christ, that. bro. <laughs> <laughs> man. We should, we should change your IG name, Izzy the Motivator, dog. <laughs> <laughs> official. <laughs> the official <laughs> motivator. Add official thanks to it. Yeah, add official. But Damn, I, so your music. Yes, yeah, you know, they're, they're circling back to the music because I mean, it's it's just there's so many ways to go around this. Yeah, yeah. Because we talk about music, but then we're gonna go to how it transpired, the motivation to come into it. But yeah, we kind of stirred uh, stirred away, but let let's focus on that. Yeah, and, and back to what you were asking, you know, the music and everything. I I really took focus to it, like I said, once I realized my talent and what God had blessed me with. And then it was an outlet for me. So I stuck with it and nothing was really happening, bro. I had a lot of traction in the beginning during the SoundCloud stage of it because I was hated heavily. And I don't know if you guys know this, but social media does a damn good job at hating someone into success. Oh, fast. There's a lot of people that are successful right now because they were hated <laughs> beyond hated measure. Thing. And I can name a few names, but we're not going to go into that. But I was hated so much. They were talking shit about me, slandering me on Twitter, bro. Just clowning me, dog. Oh, like, oh, bro. Before I was Izzy, I was Isaac. That was my high school name, you know. Oh, Isaac thinks he can rap. The dude is trash. Well, they were creating memes before memes were even a thing. You know what I mean? And I was just going against the grain and just struggling to get respected. That's what I was wanting so bad. So finally broke out of that, started having traction and then boom, fast forward, bro. And not a lot of people know this, but it's, it's there. Ariana Grande reached out to me, bro. She responded to my, my tweet. It wasn't a tweet. It was a video I posted. Cause I do a lot of covers. I'll take a song that's popular and twist it and make my own thing of it. You know what I mean? I'll rap on it on the beat. Mm -hmm. I took her instrumental to thank you next. Spun it my own way. Kind of like, Fuck my ex type of thing. And oh, it shit. went crazy, bro. And Ariana Grande saw it. She reached out publicly on Twitter twice, bro. To get the attention of Ariana Grande, let alone one of the biggest pop stars of our generation, Michael Jackson level. You know what I'm saying? Drake level. Like, I, I wouldn't say Michael Jackson level. That's a stretch. Don't cancel me for that. <laughs> All the old heads, don't do that. Don't cancel me for that. But y'all get the point. So you gotta talk that shit, though. Yeah, that moment in time was crazy. I was still at my nine to five, bro. And I was like, bro, this is it. This is where I break through. I'm going to be the next Drake. Like, I'm going to be that guy. And that moment shortly died out. It was crazy for a minute. Hollywood life got to it. You know, they posted blogs about it. Yo, this Twitter rapper, you know, makes Ariana Grande remix. And, you know, she reached out to him. She kind of reached out to me in like a condescending way at first. And then she flipped it and showed some love at the end on her second response, which was dope. And I appreciate her response. And at, at all you know what I mean the whole thing but anyways that happened and then that was a breakthrough in my career you know you're gonna have breakthrough moments you're also gonna have dry spells yeah. you know what I mean so throughout the dry spell that was a breakthrough and then another dry spell for about like a month and then there's an artist um shout out to Fora you know Fora is an artist that I looked up to heavily you know yeah. what I mean um there very was emotional some, very if oh, you can man. see the similarities in our music, yeah. you know, shout out to him. He had a huge inspiration in, in what I was doing. You know what I mean? I, I discovered him early in my career. Um, shit hit the fan with him. You know what I mean? Uh, there was a lot of misunderstandings. And um, basically, I dropped a diss record. 
I dropped the disc record and, you know, later on apologized for the whole thing. It was a misunderstanding. But, you know, once that disc record drops, obviously he heard it, you know, the, everything, every, all the people that were like, yo, I thought you, you know, loved for it, whatever, whatever. They were like, man, I was getting canceled, bro. Before cancel culture was a thing. So not only was Ariana Grande's fans coming from my neck, like they were coming from my neck, like you dumbass, you don't know what the hell the song was about. There was, it was a good positive song and you took it and started you being a dickhead. Of, bro. So I had that in a month and a half later the four shit happened so i went from ariana grande fans killing me off to four fans killing me off so can you imagine bro this is why i was already uh in i was like engraved to do this shit like cancel culture was already happening at that moment for me so i experienced that early yeah. i got my thick skin ready to go the callus were there because bro you gotta have thick skin to be on social media nowadays but anyways yeah so that those two moments in my career were really like crazy to me because I had some sort of, you know, uh, exposure, publicity before TikTok became a thing, before my face was everywhere on videos and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, fast forward after that, dry spell again, you know, things things got slow for me and I just kept trying to stick to the script. And that's that was my key was sticking to the script, bro. Because even through the dry spells, even when shit's not popping off and it's not, you know, not moving for you, you got to thug it out got to stick to whatever the plan was because ultimately as long as you get through this dry spell the, the the gap between being successful being here today and and being where you were bro this in between like we spoke about before that's the that's the beautiful part that struggle that point in time where shit just don't make sense you're broke nobody believes in you you dis you're disappointing your family because you're not going to school you're not getting a degree you're not going you're getting a nice job whatever whatever you're trying to be a rapper, you're trying to be a podcaster, whatever the social media world wants to call you, you're trying to do that. And at the same time, you're not succeeding in it. You got to stick to the script. You got to understand that regardless of the current stat status of where you're at, it's going to happen as long as you stick to it. Because, bro, that's why people fail and they're always going to sit there and be like, damn, I could have, I should have, I, I could have did this. I, I was there then. But, bro, you should have stuck to it. All you got, that's literally the key to success in anything and every aspect of life. Stick to it. Whether that's your gym routine, your gym uh, goals, your job, your career, your relationship. Why do you think uh, divorce is so prevalent nowadays? Because motherfuckers don't stick to the script. They think that as soon as this shit gets hard, boom, let's go find the next person. Yes. Nah, yeah. and the same thing with your career. As soon as this shit gets hard, I'm going to go to the next career. I'm going to go to the next career and the next career. Nah, bro, you got to stick to the script. Down. There's no easy way yeah, out, bro. There ain't no easy way at all. That's why, like, the biggest thing is, like, when shit gets tough, you got to stick it out. You have to in every aspect. Stick to the fucking script. Every time. Don't give up, every right? Time. But you have to do the work. Yes. People try to go away. Like, once they find out how much work it takes, oh, fuck. It ain't for uh, everybody, bro. I don't know. I don't it know. For it's not, bro. Mm -mm. When when someone gives you the praise, I'm like, do you know how much we went through to yeah. get to this point? Yeah. For you to see us where we're at? Mm -hmm. Bro, we've been through so much, you wouldn't even imagine why we're so smiling right now. Oh, bro. We are smiling because we're happy with what we're doing but if you would know what we went through, you'd be fucking like depressed. It's discouraging to think about how much it takes just to to break the surface. Yeah. Not even to become someone of status, if not let alone someone successful, but to break the surface, to get the setup, the cameras, the lights, you know, the people to support you, the money to invest. You know what I mean? This shit it wasn't given so to you. The bigger but the biggest thing is to be confident and realize what your gift is. Yes. Yes, acknowledge everybody is gifted, but to find out what your gift is, yep. a lot of people don't figure that out. And they're because they're scared of failing, bro. Yeah, they're like I, of failing. I tell everybody, like, oh man, like, why do you, uh, bro, this is my gift, dog. Yeah, I know I can help and reach people, but because the power above blessed me enough to do this, I just took it into existence and put the work in. Yeah, now we're going where we're going. Yo, we're not done. We're just yeah. getting started. Yeah. Two years in, we're still getting started. And it's not going to be sweet the whole way either. Oh, uh, no. Nah. A lot of people think this shit is just sunshine and rainbows. Uh, no, like, not, oh, no. they see the, 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 the YouTubers and all the successful uh, content creators. They're like, I want to be just like that. But are you willing to do everything they did to get to where they're at? Because there's no, a lot of social media creators and artists and people of that nature, podcast people, they don't post the, 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 the journey. They yeah. don't explain that. Hey, bro, you're going to have to go broke. 
You're going to have to sleep out of your car like I did for a week. You know what I mean? You're going to have to, you know, Leave go work two jobs. And on top of that, figure out a way to make content in between that. You know? You're going to have to sacrifice time with sacrifice your loved ones. Sacrifice time with your loved ones. Be judged by everyone. And with the chance of it not working, bro, because none of this shit is promised. Tomorrow ain't promised, my G. True. So if, if you're willing to do this, you got to be willing to sacrifice everything. If you're gonna, that's what if, you did, bro. If you're going to step foot into this realm or whatever realm you're going into, be ready for the the hits, mm. the uppercuts, the yeah. side the side blow, everything that's with, that's gonna come to you. Yeah, being talked about, being in that spotlight, everybody doubting you. Be ready. Yeah, and you got to make sure you you're surrounded by the right people. You got to make sure Absolutely. your head is on right. Absolutely. And if you're going to fight any demons, make sure you talk your shit to those fucking demons <laughs> and be like, yo, motherfucker, I'm going to win. Yeah. And Don't come this way, bitch, yeah. because I'm going to win. And Whenever I'm at the gym, those demons run like motherfuckers. I'll tell you hey, that. Yes. <laughs> those hey, demons I'll, run. I'll spread light to one thing. Ain't no demon stronger than God, bro. Ooh. Ain't no demon stronger than God. I'll tell you that right now. Amen. Hey, Amen, hey, bro. hey, I want to <laughs> tell you guys this. I may seem like, you know, the cool guy, whatever, jewelry, whatever. Every single morning, I dedicate 20 to 30 minutes of my day. Every single morning. I don't skip a beat. I don't care if I'm hungover, if I'm, you know, feeling like shit. It don't matter. I put on 20 to 30 minutes of gospel music. I have memorized songs from Maverick City, Elevation Worship. These, these are just some of the groups that I listen to. And it starts my days in a way that no nothing else could help me. That's a different vibe. And God, starting with God, bro, God is the answer. And I figured that out. And I'm not going to sit here and act all hypocritical because I'm not a perfect person. I'm not a saint. I'm going to be real with you. You know what I'm saying? We just took a shot before this podcast, and I'm going to take one after. But the point I'm trying to make is, bro, starting with God, your days, every single day, bro, you're going to start with more energy, more vibrancy. You're just going to be so much more, you know, energetic. And I, I, I'm not ashamed to say I start every single day with gospel music. I don't play no Drake. I ain't playing no little babies. Ain't nothing playing outside of gospel music, bro. And I think that's very, very, uh, it's, it's it's important for people to really implement in their life. You know what I mean? It's it's important to believe in a higher power, and it's important to to put a certain way of living in your life in order to get you to the right space. Like, because those demons. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're never going to wake up perfect Ever. or there's going to be days we wake up motivated because we got eight hours of sleep. There's going to be days that we don't wake up motivated because we couldn't sleep and yeah. whatever the case is. Yeah. And you know what? When you wake up and if you're not feeling that motivation, yo, <laughs> set yourself some time. Be in your feelings. Think about everything going on. But you know you're that person. Can I, can I tell you something that you missed out of what you just said that was very, very Go important? Go ahead. That Go. everyone probably missed is the fact that you said you woke up. Facts. Oof. You woke up, bro. Yeah. There's there's people out in, in the world that didn't get to wake up and open their eyes and, and smell the fresh air and walk their two feet. There's people that are paralyzed. We have the blessing and the ability to move, to wake up, to, to be alive. You know, I just lost my brother. I want to spread light on this moment too. Spencer Webb. He was the tight end for Oregon Ducks football team. And, you know, he he was an important person in my life because he believed in me when no one else did. And he lost his life at a very young age, 22 years old, had nothing but life ahead of him, had his career ahead of him. But he's he's gone. He can never get the opportunity that I can get that I had this morning to get out of my bed that you had, that he had, that everyone else in the back had. We all had the opportunity to do something great. So the minute you feel in that laziness, that you're feeling discouraged, de depressed, all that shit, bro, out the window, as soon as you realize that, damn, I'm alive, G. I'm alive to do this shit again and get another opportunity to be great, another opportunity to go inspire someone to be great, another opportunity just to be alive and, and to live this life that, you know what I'm saying, that we, we're all blessed to have. That's the beauty in what you said, bro. Sorry, I, I didn't want to go too side note on that. But nah, you, that wake up line, bro, is crazy because we go over that and talk about, you know, other things. We woke up. We woke up. And we're alive, bro. Let's give flowers to your brother, bro. Man. Hey. To my brother Spencer, man. Mega nasty. Mega nasty. Mega nasty. Mega nasty. Fucking nasty. That's a good Hey, one. wash your hands. Oh, they're washed. <laughs> From last night, they're washed. Hey. No, I'm not going to say shit. This girl's oh, present. I'm not going to say anything. Hey, bro. I, I get it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I give you, just, say much. Just, just know I give you the left hand. I'll tell you that. Oh, man. Damn. So what? what is 
in your books, your most, your favorite song that you have put out to the world? By far, Closure. It's it's um, my most successful song. Oh, but it's it's called Closure, and that song came about because I was bottling the reality of my situation, which brought about my TikToks, all my videos about relationships and, mm-hmm. you know, the the deep talks about love and, you know, being heartbroken and shit. And that song is what explained, is, is what explained everything. Yeah. It literally brought to light the whole thing. So what is closure to you for those people that are trying to figure that out? Closure for me was what I deserved, but I wasn't given. So I got it through expressing everything that I felt and that I wanted to tell that person, but knowing I couldn't. So I wrote the song in, in, in a form of me talking to that person and expressing myself and telling them every single thing that went on emotionally after the departure of the relationship. So, but yeah, closure for me was being able to come to grips with everything to finally express the way I feel because everybody instinctively, bro, after a relationship is pride. It's ego. I'm not hurt. Man, girls especially. I love (laughs) women. You know what I mean? My moms, my sister, everybody, I love y'all. But women especially, bro, they're the first to go to the club. They're the first to post on Snapchat. They're the first to to post that single status Yeah. because they don't want to be perceived as sad and hurt and the one that was victimized from the situation. But at the end of the day, dog, regardless if you're a woman, a man, Everybody gets hurt, and it's, it's, it's very healthy yeah. to be open with that, to accept it, to be transparent with it. Because a lot of motherfuckers, bro, they're going to hide that shit. And dudes, too, they, they'll go to the club, they'll go have sex with 25 women, bro. But once that's said and done, bro, after that 25th girl, and you're sitting there like, damn, now what? Now I'm, I have to deal with the heartbreak. Now I'm thinking about what she's doing, and now I'm thinking if she slept with 25 men. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think for myself, having that closure, even though I didn't get it through that person, I didn't, I didn't get what I felt I deserved, especially after all the work I put in, it was enough for me to finally say, all right, this is off my chest. This is the last. And in the song, I said I had to get this off my chest. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, bro, that, I'm, <laughs> I feel a little anxiety talking about it because that was a time <laughs> in my life, bro, that was, whoo, I, I had never been dealt that card. You know what I'm saying? I've always been the one to kind of, you know, be the perpetrator or the person that ends the relationship or the one that broke broke things off. But to be have my heart broken into pieces, to be, you know, given the same medicine that I once gave out, it was it was a, a humbling thing from God. And I needed that in order to find what I have now. I have such a beautiful woman in my life, bro. She's an amazing person. She's by far everything I could have asked for and more. You know what I'm saying? So give it up for that one. <laughs> we got to, we got to. So we're we're going on 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 a, a tangent again. Yeah, tangent. Yeah, yeah. So closure, closure. My my favorite song. Closure. Okay. Yeah. Um, going on to the next one, right? Yeah. Where do you see your music, and what's the purpose of your music for everybody listening in yeah. that's trying to figure out? Um, Izzy, like, why do you make music, dog? Like, yeah, what yeah. is it? Um, you know. You want, you want to be honest with everyone and, and tell them the, the, the honest truth. Of course, you know, the publicity is nice. You know, getting that, that uh, you know, fame, quote-unquote fame, everybody loves attention, regardless if they say they do or not. Um, that's, that's the benefit in music. But my sole purpose of sticking through and wanting to continue to post music and put out content and, you know, just post my, my music in, entirely is to continue to inspire to continue to be that outlet like I started in the beginning with because again bro the feeling of getting that dm that message like yo this song right here hit me yeah I can't thank you enough I can't tell you bro and this is you know strike me if I'm lying god kill me right now (laughs) Uh, uh, there's probably a better way of putting that but you know what I mean um I've had Hundreds, and I'll say hundreds because that's like a modest way of saying it because there's probably more than hundreds. Hundreds of DMs and messages, personal messages sent to me in regards to my music and my content saying, I've, I've seen people say I've saved them from wanting to commit suicide. I've saved them from their 10-year relationship that ended in a divorce, um, their emotional mess that they were in. 
the, the chaos they're going through that I saved them, bro. Being able to say that I saved one person, let alone hundreds and thousands of people that consume my content, Fact. that in itself is what keeps me going and wants me to continue posting and doing what I do. And that's making music and that's being the, the voice for others that don't have what I have. That's fucking beautiful. Yeah. What is happiness to Izzy? Man, happiness is is the state of being calm. The state of being calm because there's so much going on mentally for someone like myself who has anxiety, depression, you know, OCD is ridiculous for me. And to find the state of peace, being calm, whether I have a million dollars in my pocket or two dollars, just being at peace with the moment and being able to just to breathe in and out and to be conscious of the fact that I'm here, I'm alive, and there's nothing else going on in my head at the moment. Because I think we all get caught up in the chaos, and that could be very, very overwhelming. And, right. you know, triggering to whatever demons you're dealing with. So, for me, I think peace, calm, and just a state of stillness is happiness for me. Yeah. In any aspect, in every, every, any way I can think about it. If I can be on a yacht doing that, or if I could be in a, a beat-up Honda, you know what I mean? It don't matter. As long as I'm still calm my thoughts are controlled that's happiness for me bro that's happiness so when someone yeah we gotta give it up we gotta give it up come on bro we gotta give izzy his flowers man you know izzy's been in this in this game for damn what seems to be like forever but it's just still getting started six years in county in county because it's never ending because the purpose and the what we live for isn't just in a time frame no no we we're for the longevity yeah that yeah. and i always say from the moment i'm here i want to make an impact so from the moment i'm gone i'm still impactful your legacy is is, is yes huge. my thing is i don't want to go six feet under and and it's shameful someone had told me like what's the richest place in the world do you know this the richest place in the, the world. richest place i'm gonna give you a wild guess and say dubai mm. nope. that's a good idea though because right, because they have like <laughs> it's a lot of money in Dubai, bro. Nah, someone uh, shout out also. He's the one that told me this, asked us this, and I was like, "Fuck, dog!" Like I don't know. And I said Dubai too, and he was like, "The cemetery." Mm. He was like, "All those dreams that that go with the person when they go six feet under." It's, Not even that. Literally, you know how expensive it is for a funeral. Oh, bro, they're making bags for people dying. Get your life insurance, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yes. got life insurance, but, but yes, back, back to the but, point. Yes, you know, it's, it's the most expensive because all those dreams and aspirations get buried. done with them. My thing is like, you know, I have the opportunity. I'm blessed to wake up. So when I go six feet under, hopefully in a hundred years from now, hundred and fifty. Yes, that there's not people. There's not one person there like, damn, he could have done this. He should have done this. Yeah, you know, he was on those weight. Now nah, he did yeah. this. Did it. He did this. Everything. That's that's that part, but you know, this month that we're in when this video drops is suicide prevention. Oh wow, yeah. right? We're in this month where it's very impactful to a lot of people. Yeah. For some reason, in this month, everybody has that confidence to kind of talk about it. Still a lot of people that don't want to talk about it. But for you, what what's getting you out of this dark cloud that you're in that you go through? Yeah. Um I think it's it's a it's a mental game and it's it's a way of conditioning you have to learn how to be busy when your mind is going cuz man the 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 mind is so powerful and it could it could stir you in either direction towards depression or happiness and a lot of That's times it could lean you towards the opposite way and, and and i get caught up in that too so for me i think it's really you know quote unquote, smelling the flowers, really thinking about how blessed you are, the things that you have, where you were and where you are. Three, year, three years ago, I asked exactly for what I have now. And I forget about it sometimes. And I'm sitting there complaining. I'm sad. I'm like, damn, I'm depressed today. But then I'm like, damn, I was in a Mazda, a Mazda 3. Bum, Man, bum, thug, thugging bum. it out. Thugging it out, right? It was an automatic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in a BMW M4 today, bro. And that's not a flex. That's not a flex, but that's a car that I used to sit there in my lunch, on my lunch, sitting in my car like, damn, I can't wait till this is the BMW that I want. 
And I'm in that today, but sometimes I forget about it. I forget that it's in my garage. I forget that I have an amazing apartment that's way more of an upgrade than where I was depressed once before. So the point I'm trying to make is, man, really make it a point to appreciate things that you take for granted on a daily basis. And there's a lot of things having your parents around, bro. There's a lot of people that don't have their mom and dads. I call my mom and my dad every single day. And at the end of the conversation, I say, I love you to both of them. My dad and I, we're both grown ass men. I say, I love you. Hug them. You know, we're very affectionate. Love on your people. Tell them you love them. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate everything that you have. Even if it's tortillas and fucking, you know. Huevos and frijoles. That's and it. Even if it's that, We ate that today. I, a, so I made him a torta. A huevos and frijoles. I love you, Dylan. Hey, Hell yeah. I, I'm husband material. It ain't, ain't got to be steak and lobster, bro. Nah, bro. You know? we, 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 we can go to the store just to buy snacks and the fact that we're able to do that man so yeah appreciate what you have and everything in it because again it could be taken from us at every moment so that's the way i deal with my mental you know demons and the things that i go on or that go on in my head all the time yeah i'm able to kind of push those out outside of my head with the things that i have now and all the blessings that I'm, i have in my life you know what i mean there was there was one thing that on the live the other day on tiktok and you, Someone asked me, like, oh, what's your plan in five years? I was like, look, I would want to live in the future, right? Yeah. Think about five years from now. Yeah. But if I live in the future, then I'm not in the present. Right. And the problem with a lot of people is they think so much about the future, mm -hmm. but they're so caught up in the past that they don't, they're not alive in the, in the present. And that's the most important thing. And that's the most here. important thing. Yeah. Like, I, I tell them, it's like, only reason I think slightly in the future is because I plan, we plan podcasts. Two, three weeks You got to have a vision. You got to have a map. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, don't forget that you're on this moment in here. Yeah. You're like, here. I, was, I was looking at my phone right now because there's a song. At a, maybe you heard it. Deep Revelance by Big Sean. Oh, Deep with Nip. Yeah, Bro, with Nip. Hustle, man. So there was, big, there was big, one big. and it says. Rest in peace to the legend, by the way. Yeah. The neighborhood. He was like, never was the loudest in the room. We move like ninjas. And yeah. if it costs you peace of mind, it might be too expensive. Yeah. Yeah, and that's true. That's very true. And then there, there is a, another part to it. I can't really find it. But, oh, in high school, I learned chemistry, biology, but not how to cope with anxiety mm -hmm. or how I could feel like I'm by myself on an island with depression all aside of me. Yeah. And when I heard that, I was like, damn, fool. Like, when we're in during those times, we've never learned this. You don't. You they tell you, oh, well, go speak to a counselor. You'll be okay. Yeah. But it's like, bro, what? I don't even know this person. How yeah. the fuck can I talk to this person? And I'm going to piggyback on that. The one, the one reason I never had a counselor or a therapist is because after my parents divorced, they put me in therapy or whatever. I opted out at 12 years old because I, in my head I already knew, like, these people are here because they're getting paid. You know, I want to, I want to be in a, in a space where I can talk to someone genuinely, yeah. you know, not for their career, but for me and them in that situation. So I just, you know, I, I don't really believe in the counseling situation and the whole therapist bullshit like no offense to people that are in therapy that helps them but yeah bro like I, I think that we're not taught what the reality of the world is and yeah that's, that's fucking the dark side of things and that's the most real reality for all of us you know what i mean it, it is and that's why suicide is the thing that's why you know depression and anxiety is always an issue you know what i mean there's these are these are issues that aren't spoke upon you got to go check in on your people ask your loved ones how they are and every if, time every time even if you're annoying them yeah, like, you know I mean? the biggest thing is, hey, how are you? Make sure everybody's good. Make sure you're good. Absolutely. Make sure you take care of your own mental health. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Most Because if you can't take care of yourself, you cannot take care of everybody else. Yeah. So if you do your due diligence, you'll be okay. Yeah. And everybody else will, will be okay. But, you know, Brian said last time, hay una sola vida y la tienes que vivir. There's only one life and you got to live it. Yeah, exactly. You know, you can't wish to be somebody else. You got to be you. And whatever repercussions come with it, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Outside of the, you know, self-love and things of that nature, being aware of, you know, mental health, I want to say that as well. Be, be you, man. Never be ashamed of what you are. Never be ashamed of what you stand by and what you stand for. And the world may not agree with you, but Nipsey said it uh, in, a, in an interview. Shout out to Nipsey. He said, I'd rather be... At war with the, at war with the world and at peace with myself, then at peace with the world and at war with myself. That's that was, and I don't know if I said good. that correctly, so I'm gonna say it one more time. I'd rather be at war with the world and at peace with myself. 
than at peace with the world and at war with myself. And I live by that because I, like I said, bro, I've people hate me for how I, what I say and how I say it and the way I move. But that's cool because I'm me. And whether you like it or not, that's not going to change. And it's not going to change in this lifetime. So get used to it or keep it pushing, bro, because I'm happy. I'm me. And I can stand by that confidently. A lot of people are, are, are not themselves, bro. And I'm going to close it on this because a lot of people get caught up in the whole argument with the jewelry and shit. None of my jewelry is real. Not my rings, not my, my wrist, not my bracelet, my, not my necklace. But I'll tell people this. It don't matter how real your jewelry is. If you ain't real yourself, if you're not a genuine person, none of that jewelry matters anything at all. I tell people there's nothing worse than having a fake person in real jewelry talking about a man who's real in, real, in fake jewelry. You can be as real as you want. As, you, know, you can be as fake as you want, you know what I'm saying? Wear real jewelry and stand by that. You know what I mean? That's cool to each its own. But for me, I'll be in fake jewelry. I'll get this shit at the swap meet, wherever I can get it at. You know what I mean? For the low. But as long as I'm real here, I stand by that, bro. Because there's, there's not an amount of money or jewelry that can, that can characterize me and what I stand for. And I'm going to stand on that forever to the day I die. And then to the day I got some real jewelry. But for now, we're going to thug this shit out and keep it real. You know what I mean? I like that. I fucking God love that shit. Damn. Let's go. Oh, oh, yeah. Hey, All right, right we're, closing, we're closing this out. Come on with the toast real quick. Where are we yeah, getting? Where are we getting? I might need another jack. You know what I'm saying? Dylan, Dylan, don't be stingy with the, with the jack, <laughs> Dylan. Dylan. Everybody watching, uh, get. I'll buy you another bottle, bro. <laughs> I'll get you another one. No, nah, don't give him another one. He has like three that's at home for no reason. If this is still going, man, be yourself. Do not be afraid of the the, the world it. judging you. You know what I'm saying? And never, never, li- never seek validation outside of you. Validate your own self. I validated right. myself the day I threw official at the end of Izzy because I was official before anyone even knew what yeah. the fuck Izzy was. Yes, sir. Yep. Yeah. Man. yeah. Validate yourself. Uh, you know, a fly was swinging on that. I would probably just get another one if you have it. There's a, there's over there. Yeah, no, that but that's the thing because you have a, Izzy official on my other page. I have official Dusko. Yes, and my thing is like in two about two years ago, and it's the same now. I am who I am, mm-hmm. and I will continue to be who I am because I am confident in my own shoes. You may not like it; it is what it is. That's you. Yeah. I love myself. Absolutely. I may go through demons. It is yeah. what it is. But, you know, I'm going to show up and show out no matter what. Pridefully, too. Pridefully, bro. Proud of that, yeah. Know? Like, I know cogginess. I know anything. I am who I am, dog. Yeah. we're and, Bro, in a, in a world full of people who don't want you to be yourself, the last thing they want you to do is be confident it, because I, people live inferior. Man, what did what did uh, Kevin Gates say? He's like, in a world full of suckers, you can't be another lollipop. Nah, man. Oh, in, in, a, in a world full of lollipops, you can't be another sucker. That's facts, bro. And That's I was facts. like... Exactly. Yeah. So since Dylan is still pouring this up. you, my brother. Thank you so much. What is one thing you value that other people don't? One thing I value that other people don't. Mm. Morals and principles. I value morals and principles more than anything. And that's, you know, how you move, you know, how you act. I'll even go as far as at the dinner table. If I go out with you at lunch, dinner, a restaurant, wherever we're at, don't leave your table for the waiter or the waitress because that's their job. Clean up after yourself. Don't embarrass me, bro. Don't leave the, the, the silverware, the cups all scattered, your table all dirty. Pick Thanks. that shit up, bro. Stand by your character. Stand by your morals and principles and value that, bro. Because, again, we live in a world where people without morals and principles are idolized. Because why? Money and fame yeah. and popularity. You take those three things away, motherfuckers ain't shit nowadays. And if all you have to stand for, if all you have to, to be looked upon and, and judged by is your, your character, your morals and principles, then the world would change. Because yeah. now it's not, oh, I'm, I could be a dickhead and be on social media all day because I'm famous. Can't tell me nothing. But you take that away, bro. You take away these platforms. There's a lot of fake, yeah. whack, whack people that don't have no morals, no principles or anything to stand by who aren't family oriented or nothing. Don't believe in God. None of that. And they're popping because they have social media clout. Clout is 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 the exchange for the the morals and principles. Vic Vlen said it best. If they were to take this away the next day, who are you? Who are you? It's, that's exactly what I'm trying to say. Who 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 you who are you really? Like, what can people say behind closed doors? Like, who does your family know you as? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and I can confidently say my family would hop on this microphone right now and speak highly of me as a uh, as a man. 
because I, I stand for a lot of things that I value in being a man, especially in this generation. And I'll never break my morals, values, or principles for any sort of clout. And I'll stand on that until social media dies out or I, I, the last breath I take. You know what I'm saying? And that's just what it's going to be. That one died? Yeah, is there... Oh, yeah, just pick it up. We're good. Go to the middle. No stabilizer. Hell no. Nah. Fuck the stabilizer real, real quick. Real vibe. All right, we're good. Ready, though? You know what, what, bro? Can I get one more? Yeah, you too. <laughs> I mean, do you see the first line, technically? That's oh. The text one. Nah, we'll no, give them yeah, all, no, dude. Come on, dude. Come on. Just something I could take with you guys. Just a small one. Finish it already? Yeah, that's what I said. Come I mean, on. Shit. Yeah, no, that's it. That's it. That's why. No, I, yeah, your first one was a shot, bro. Yeah, come on, didn't. All right, so everybody tuning in, it's also like podcast. This yes, podcast sir. with Izzy. I just want to one give you the thanks for coming all this way Absolutely, with us bro. and sharing you. everything about you on this platform. Absolutely, thank you for having me. And you. the second one, and full. This is like full circle because I've watched you on social media. Prior to everything, yeah, and now to sit here with you, with everybody in this room, is literally a dream come true. Wow! Because that's... now we just got a great conversation that I know is going to help out a lot of people that listen into this. Absolutely, man, and I appreciate you providing this platform for for people like me, creators like me, and uh, doing what you were destined to be, bro. Like, yes, sir, I, I appreciate you, man. You as well, bro. And shout out to the whole a toast is life, a toast to life podcast, man. It's been a blessing. Cheers yes, to that. sir. You already hey, know. Yo, boy, Izzy official, Man. million dollar drains. Let's go. Let's Cheers, go. Fellas.